All right, let's get on with it. So welcome to the G Plans webinar. I want to keep this thing really informal, so I've written down a whole bunch of stuff to go over with you guys. Welcome to my office. So this is where I do all my daily work. Uh, this is my brick and mortar. This is where I see all my patients, all my celebs. Uh, anybody getting ready for an action adventure film, uh, anybody getting ready to play in the NBA or currently playing in the NBA. You know, most of my athletes are here, all my elite celebrity stars are here, but this is where the magic happens. And now I'm going to make it happen for you through G plans. So we're going to take you through a great program where your food program changes on a weekly basis. I'm going to partner with you in this. You and I will collaborate work through your weekly food choices. But before we get started, I wanted to answer some questions that I get in the office on a weekly and, and daily basis. So I, I want you to know that I've been working on this for over 35 years, that I've got huge nutrition history, 35 years of really understanding nutrition, nutrition platforms, metabolic structures and types, inherently found within the questionnaire that you filled out or your metabolic structure and type through your blood work, through that lipid profile. But these questionnaires have been honed for years and years as well, that lipid profile and assessment. So once you understand your metabolic type, then we can dive right into the ideal food structure that I've personally designed for you that will shift on a weekly basis. And don't be afraid of these calories and things. Remember, as you develop more lean muscle, your calories are gonna expand and grow. Generally speaking, every single week, your calories go up a smidge. As you develop more lean tissue, as you increase your energy platform on a weekly basis, calories will shift and change. So remember, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Most of the patients that come in and see me on a, on a weekly basis, they're eating healthfully already, but they've hit sticking points. So a couple of things to remember is that even though you may be eating healthfully, if you're not eating for your specific structure, for your right metabolic type, then you're always leaving some performance on the table, always leaving some excess weight on the table. If you are not managing your macronutrients correctly, your percentage of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, your body will always adapt and you'll always hoard more fat than you should. And then as well, as you adjust foods, many folks jump on food programs and they wanna stay there where they wanna keep the calories the same. And I, I know you've heard this, like you've started the food program, or your friend started the food program, and they lost five or 10 pounds within the first week or so. And it's pretty interesting. It's like, all right, well, I'm down five or 10 pounds. I've been into this food program for a week or two weeks, but now my body isn't changing. Well, just because they were not on a food program to begin with, and then they started one, the consistent caloric patterning of that allowed them to create some weight loss. But now the food program matches their body composition and they're not changing, so they think they need to eat less. So maybe they exercise more and eat less, and they start to lose muscle tissue. So they lose a few more pounds, but before you know it, their energy level drops, they feel exhausted and tired, and then they bend over to pet their cat and their back goes out. So remember, this is 80% kitchen, 20% gym. The little food journey you're on, it's really about how you repair tissue. You know, when you hear that, that phrase, bodybuilding, it's not really bodybuilding, it's body breaking down. When you go to the gym, when you do your cardiovascular work, when you take your exercise classes, you are breaking down muscle tissue. The job of your foods is to promote tissue repair. And that's the beauty of our platform. It promotes tissue repair. It creates an anabolic environment where your tissue is repairing. If you lined up 20 of the best athletes in the world and you said to them, all right, boys, this week you have to give up something. Training or food, what will you give up? Every athlete will say, dump the training, maintain the food. And it sounds counterintuitive, but if you take a civilian that's trying to drop weight and you ask them, hey, how are you managing your foods? They'll always tell you, oh, foods are the villain. I know food makes me fat. I eat one can of tuna and two apples a day and I'm doing 20 hours of cardio a week. And the athlete guy will say, well, how's that working for you? And the civilian will always say, well, you know, come to think about it, I'm so tired, I'm so moody. I don't know, but my trainer says I'm getting weaker in the gym. Like, I don't get it, maybe it's not working. And the athlete will say, that's intense, that's huge work ethic. But when you go to the gym, you actually create a catabolic event where you're breaking down muscle tissue. And you want to do that, but then you want to stop that event. And you want to create an anabolic environment where the tissue repairs. That's your food, your metabolic structure, hydration, and recovery like sleep. That's so important to manage your foods first. And that's why every athlete will tell you, 
foods first. And within that food context, every athlete and civilians as well, everybody I work with on a weekly basis, we are concerned about aging. The biggest aging factor is inflammation. So this food program is no inflammation. That's the big rule. So there are a couple of things in here you gotta remember. No yeast, no mold, no gluten, no dairy. So when we say no yeast, no mold, no gluten, it really means no bread breads, muffins, bagels, whole wheat breads, sandwich breads. Your starches will be one ingredient guys, like potatoes, rice, yams, oatmeal, oat flakes, oat puffs. Look at your starches and ask them how many ingredients are in you. And if they tell you more than one, don't eat it. Stay away from it. And then dairy. Again, line up 20 of the best athletes in the world and say, hey man, I came here to take your dairy order. You're not going to get any. Athletes don't consume dairy. It's like eating moderately hard phlegm. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> uh, I told you this was going to be <laughs> informal. So, so dairy is like eating that phlegm thing. And it inhibits oxygen, adversely affects digestion. It promotes inflammation. It elevates triglyceride levels. So we're going to stay away from the yeast, mold, dairy, and gluten thing. And then finally, I want you to check in on a weekly basis. You'll be keeping a dietary diary. You'll be logging your foods. You'll be partnered with me in this on a weekly basis. Use the resources. Use the shake recipes, the free food lists, the shopping lists. Take advantage of everything we have within this program. It's a deep, deep platform. And you and I will be partnered in this for quite some time. I look forward to really changing your nutritional information and increasing your wisdom about it.